Hey, um, this video will be about peanut allergies, which I know you can all see the title there on Facebook. But um, this is in the chapter about allergies, and the book is called Crooked Man-Made Disease Explained by Forrest, Forrest Meredy. And his theory is that um, vaccines cause allergies, and his research is very interesting in what he has to say. So, this is from page 241 if you buy the book and you want to look it up. <laughs> it's available on Amazon. He says, it is impossible to speak of allergies and not mention the peanut allergy, the cause of so much suffering amongst children today. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, I don't remember anybody having a peanut allergy. That's what's weird. It's like, this is a very recent thing. Like, you know, and now they're increasing vaccines and I guarantee if people did research, which a lot of people don't, but <laughs> if you do, you would probably see that the more vaccines that kids are getting, there there's an increase in allergies and food allergies and peanut allergies. Okay, for someone who has developed an allergy to peanuts, exposure can be life-threatening. If you've never witnessed a child gasping desperately for, for air from exposure to a tiny amount of the seemingly benign, like safe, legume, it's difficult to understand the fear both child and parent must live with every day. Peanut allergy is a modern problem that doesn't appear to have existed in any medical literature until the late 1940s, which was when vaccines started. A 1941 book on food allergy titled Strange Melody attempted to explain what is called this strange illness. A partial list of problematic foods the author identified were milk, egg, corn, soybean, cottonseed, shrimp, tomato, cabbage, cherry, chocolate, and strawberries. Peanut allergies were notably absent from this list but would soon make an appearance just a few years later in 1950 after a study on injected penicillin revealed that an ingredient used in the manufacture of the new antibiotic, peanut oil, hmm, was causing peanut allergies for children in the test. Yeah, you gotta watch out for antibiotics too. I've said this on a few of my videos, but I was engaged to a guy who died six years ago, and the day he died, he took an antibiotic. I mean, I know they're necessary sometimes. I'm not going to say don't ever take antibiotics. I've had ear infections, and that's the only thing that will fix it is an antibiotic. But you still need to be careful, and don't take them too much. So that's interesting. So this antibiotic caused uh, the peanut allergy, was causing peanut allergies for children in the test. Let's see. That's from, it says, Heather Frazier's The Peanut Allergy Epidemic is an excellent read on this topic. <clears throat> For many, the milk, egg, or shrimp allergies they had begun to experience were an annoyance. Peanuts were different. Their ability to harm appeared to be uniquely powerful, as researchers have confirmed. Our observations, when combined with those published by other investigators, suggest that the high incidence, persistence, and severity of peanut allergy may result from a combination of properties that make it a perfect allergen. What does that mean? Like perfectly deadly? I don't know. Much speculation has been made over the contents of various pharmaceutical products over the years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's been so many recalls, so many lawsuits that you see commercials about, like Yaz, which was a birth control pill. It's like, if there's lawsuits over one, why wouldn't there be lawsuits over all of them? Which there probably will be eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are so many stages to the manufacturer of any modern drug or vaccine that it would be difficult to guarantee it to be absolutely free of any trace of peanut. Hmm. Maybe the big, oh, maybe the bacteria altering properties of certain antibiotics many kids are likely to receive today can create so many problems in their gut that food particles make it into their bloodstream. This may be why we sometimes see food allergy in unvaccinated children because they took antibiotics. Perhaps it does not matter. Before the age of aluminum, peanuts may have been uniquely unable to create allergy without being injected, and even that direct assault created only a minor sensitivity compared with what we see in children of today. On the other hand, with the gut flesh with a gut flesh with aluminum, the allergenicity of peanuts, even by simple ingestion, might be catapulted into the vaunted status it occupies today. He uses too many big words. <laughs> <laughs> was the smallpox vaccine the cause of hay fever? As the ingredients of the vaccine are poorly understood even today, it is possible to say, but given the remarkably similar timing and location of appearance 
of this new illness, allergies, hay fever, it would appear likely. As the vaccine was discontinued in the 1970s, well, vaccine, the smallpox vaccine, one might expect that the rates of hay fever should be going down, and in fact, they appear to be doing just that. Hmm, interesting. If you look up allergy statistics, you will discover that the age group of 18 to 44-year-olds has slightly more than half as much hay fever as the older groups. Hmm. So people that people who would have received the smallpox vaccine. That makes sense because my mom's always had horrible allergies. And if they discontinued it in the 1970s, she probably had it before they discontinued it. I believe the smallpox vaccine, because it was grown in various animals, contained a unique component that created a pollen allergy in many of those who got the vaccine. This allergy would stand alone for a long time, an illness so unique that a more broad-term allergy wasn't coined until 1904, nearly 85 years later. Yeah, and then what's interesting about that is that if your parents got this smallpox vaccine and then they had kids, it could be in your bloodstream too and in your genes. So you probably have allergies like they did as a result of this vaccine, even though you didn't get the vaccine because we get everything from our parents, obviously, through their genes. In the 1900s, when aluminum began to be injected, its unique properties, though not understood, became apparent as people could develop allergies and asthmatic responses to nearly anything. As it turns out, asthma and allergies may be just two of the symptoms of a dysfunctional immune system caused by aluminum's ability to modify the body's response to invaders. This realization would put a very unlikely set of diseases on the list beside asthma and allergies, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. So, and I'm going to read to you some of the chapter titles, so maybe you'll be more interested in buying this book. Let's see, here are the chapter titles. A Flicker of Light, Everywhere and Nowhere, Babies, maybe I'll read that one next. Autism and Asymmetry, Even the Bones, question mark. And then, he, and then Crooked Smiles, Crooked Eyes, Right Side High, Left Side Low. That's actually exactly how my face is. Interesting. Lymph in the brain, ADHD, fevers and autism and ADHD, speech disorders, vision disorders, hearing and motion disorders, eating disorders, behavioral disorders. That would be interesting. Ticks, Tourette's, and facial pain. <clears throat> autism and babies. Why don't girls get autism? That's a good question. I mean, I'm sure some do, but it is primarily something that happens in boys, just like ADD and ADHD was primarily in boys. Primarily. Allergies and asthma, I just read. Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So he analyzes all of these things and sees how they're connected to metals and aluminum, which we get injected into us through the vaccines. Uh, what else? Alzheimer's disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, chronic Lyme disease, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. The problem with vitamin D. Um... Females and autoimmunity, Parkinson's, thyroid, multiple sclerosis, eczema, anemia, and heart disease. I should probably read the heart disease one because I have been having problems. Signs of acute metal toxicity, healing chronic infection, healing and recovery. I should read that next probably because <laughs> that's really what people need. And that's only like 30 pages of his book, but oh well, whatever. <laughs> Anyway, so you guys should all think about buying this book. If you or someone you know has any of those disorders, um, I would highly recommend it. So he doesn't just talk about autism. He talks about all these different things and how they could all be connected. And it's very interesting. So I pray that you will check it out. It is called Crooked, the incredible story of metal microbes and medicine hidden within our faces. Dun, dun, dun. And see the picture is a baby with a crooked smile, which is, yeah, you see that a lot. And I forget if it was, well, some video that I saw on YouTube, but it was talking about that, that you see that everywhere you go now, like you'll see in Walmart or something, you'll see kids with their eyes that seem kind of off center, like they're crooked. There's like, you just notice that there's something different about their eyes. And yeah, if they smile, maybe it's crooked, like... I guess my smile is mostly straight, but anyways, I know my ears are crooked, so 
yes, very, very interesting. So anyways, I hope you all will check this book out and I'll pray real quick. God, I pray that people watching this will really be interested, that they will buy this book and actually read it and have the discipline to read it and take the time. And thank you for wisdom. Help us all to be as wise as serpents, but as innocent as doves, because that's what you said, Jesus. So help us to seek knowledge and to make it help make it help us help more people. And just amen. May God bless you all. Have a great day.